Now we are moving on to something that has a really funky name, and it's called dangling modifiers. And I'm sure you've never heard of these before, and if you have, I'm sure you love the name just as much as I do. And basically, it's a hugely important lesson in grammar that you should always remember with you, and you should always use in whatever you're writing, whether it's for the SAT or not. Uh, basically, what dangling modifiers refer to are when you start a sentence with a clause that has no subject, what needs to happen is that the subject has to come immediately after the comma. So now let's look at that first example. It says, walking down the street, comma, lightning struck Kyle. So looking at that sentence. If we have this as our first clause, walking dot, 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 down the street, comma, lightning. The first thing you want to realize is that this clause, walking down the street, has absolutely no subject. Who was walking? We don't know. So the answer to that question has to come immediately after the comma. Now, looking at the way this sentence is written, it's basically telling us that lightning was walking down the street. We know lightning cannot walk down the street, so this is grammatically incorrect. So that's wrong. What we have to do is change this sentence to say, walking down the street, Kyle was hit by lightning. Because now we know that Kyle was doing the walking. So now if that makes sense to you, I want you to try the dangling modifier drill to see if you can spot all these clauses that are missing subjects and make sure that the next clause coming right after the comma starts with your subject.